Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 355, TikTok Ruins Everything. Welcome to the Nut Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me, as always, Mr. Dave Baylor. Well, hello there, sir. It is good to see your smiling mustache, yes. as always. Yes, and we talked about this offline one of the, one of the times, but our, our metric regarding the new iPhones and how much better they are is dependent on if they are able to see your mustache in the portrait mode. Yes. yes. Uh, the portrait sensor, whatever it is, does not seem to pick up your very thin, long, and curly mustache for some reason. No, it is. It's a little too thin for their computational photography and uh why don't we just jump right in i teased last week after our half an hour discussion of ios 16 that i would uh discuss my new iphone 14 pro Mm uh, a little more this week and i've got portrait mode on there i don't see a mustache well, I see your beard and yeah, mustache. I I did some testing. Oh, there's a little bit. A little bit. It's gotten a little better, okay. uh, but it's it's still not perfect. So that that's why I don't take many portrait photos of myself. Um, but anyways, my overall thoughts on the iPhone 14 Pro, uh, the dynamic island. I really like that. As I had kind of thought, having all the notifications and everything mm-hmm. kind of condensed there, uh, the always on screen is nice. I've heard a lot of people saying, well, I just see it laying on the desk and I think it turned on or there was a notification or something. Um, It's not like something I absolutely need, but it is nice to be able to quickly glance, see the time, but I also have my Apple watch on. Um, Other than that, it feels a little snappier, but I think that's just (laughs) mental. It's supposed to be faster. It's got a new chip and everything. Uh, Battery life has been great. Lasts all day. I think it's supposed to be an hour longer than the 13 pro. Wow. Um, but you know, it seems about the same. It's kind of hard to judge that without doing specific testing on it overall. And then the cameras. Now I've been trying to do some testing with my 13 pro and my 14 pro. Now you, I haven't seen a drastic difference. I haven't really gone into pixel peep and all that stuff. It does yeah. have the 48 megapixel camera. So in theory, uh, you get better pictures. You can do the better raw photos. Most people, unless you really want to have the new phone every year, going from the 13 Pro to the 14 Pro isn't really your upgrade cycle. Yeah. I see some advantages to this one. Uh, what I want to do is grab Chelsea's 12 Pro and do some comparisons with that. It might even be better to find like somebody with an iPhone 11 and yeah. do some comparisons between those because that's more of a realistic upgrade cycle to those people. I would say, hey, if you can get the 14 Pro, go for it. I actually, uh, one of the guys that work out at the winery that I help with um, the other day, he's like, oh, did you get the new iPhone? And we were kind of in passing. And I was like, yeah, he's like, so did I. And he held it up and it just had the two cameras, which means <laughs> he got the non-pro. And a, and he's a big photographer. He does some yeah. amazing nature photography. And I haven't had a chance to ask him like, hey, dude, why'd you go with the non-pro if, you know, maybe it's because he really loves using his big camera for that kind of stuff. But mm-hmm. 14 Pro, I'm liking it. Dynamic Island's really cool. Everything else seems a little bit better leave it to the pros that really compare the, that know what to look for. Yeah. I've said this, I think maybe it was last year or the year before for me, I love taking pictures with my phone so much and I'm not that great at taking pictures. So any advantage I can have, uh, I will take with the new phone. Uh, the low light does seem, um, to be a bit better, which is one of the things they were touting at the, uh, release event. But yes, the iPhone 14 pro, uh, especially if you're older than the 13 Pro, I would say <laughs> it is a great phone to go for. Good luck getting one. Um, the I think the last I looked, it was like mid-October, but they'll usually come quicker than what Apple quotes you. Yeah, overall, I think it's a great device, but all the stuff that you said is true. I did hear on a podcast today, and I tried it out because I went to the Apple store today oh, to yes. look at the... Uh, uh, the new Ultra Apple Watch, yes. but the 14 Pro with the dynamic island, someone said, go into the music app and play a song and then swipe up on the music app to go back to your home screen. And it does this 
little cool animation where it kind of bounces up and then spreads out. Uh, I don't know what other applications do that, but maybe all yeah. audio apps kind of have this interesting animation. But the fit and finish on the usage of the dynamic island is oh. what's appealing to a lot of people. Yes, yes. And there's even, uh, because app developers are clever, there is a game that I download called Hit the Island, where yeah. it's like Pong, but the dynamic island is what you're trying to hit, and it kind of has a animation around it, a uh, fun little free game. Hit the Island is a bonus bonus pick if you have... I don't know what it would do on the 13s or older if it works with the notch. Yeah, all. maybe it bangs on the notch. I guess we'll have to try it out. Yes, but uh, yeah, so the 14 Pro, it's a really good phone. I still need to use it more. Now, here's an interesting thing. The case I had for my 13 Pro... I had heard that they fit, and Dave, I'll show you. So this is my 13 Pro case on my 14 Pro. It fits, but you can see it kind of cuts up right against the cameras instead of fitting around the camera notch. Well, that means there would be a bulge underneath where the little, because there's like a terrace. Yes, yeah. Then, so there's a, it doesn't affect the pictures. It does cover the LiDAR. So I was trying to go no case. Every year I want to go no case. I know. I'm, just, I'm not brave enough. But the problem was I was DJing a wedding on Saturday. And at the end of the night, they played Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. And, and everybody I... there. Yeah. 100 people <laughs> circled up. They were, um, everybody was circled up. They ended up dancing in the middle of the couple. But I was like, oh, I'm going to grab my new phone. I'm going to go to video. I'm going to go in the middle and do like kind of a circular. Well, there was a smudge on my lens that I didn't catch. Oh, and I no. found that without the case, you naturally have your fingers right up on the cameras, which is easy to smudge mm. without the case and with the case. Um, so I actually found, I think it's the same exact case for the 14 Pro that I'll have tomorrow. But I thought it was interesting that the case does technically fit everywhere. It's just a little weird on the camera bump. I think you should have just got a Dremel and routered it out. Well, yes, I could have. Or if I had, knew anybody with a 3D printer that could print me a hmm. case. I certainly could 3D print you a case, but the time and effort that it would take, it's cheaper probably just to buy one. To buy the one for 16 bucks on Amazon yeah. that uh, seems to work well. Well, back uh, into other tech follow-up, we've got a new <laughs> Plus service been released, and I oh, was boy. surprised on this one. It is Stratechery Plus, hmm. um, which Ben Thompson, who I think is one of the best technology analysts out there, he does a weekly newsletter or update, he does a couple podcasts, um, well, he's expanding with a new podcast that's under this umbrella called Sharp Tech, uh, mm. where he's doing some more long form and interview stuff. Um, but then he changed the name to Stratechery Plus. Now, I think it is. Uh, Did he do it I, ironically, perhaps? I, I think so. I think it's kind of, hey, everybody else does it. Why not do it myself to show? So it has the Stratechery update, the weekly update, the Stratechery interviews. The Sharp Tech, which is his new one, and then you also get Dithering, uh, which is with John Gruber of Daring Fireball, which I subscribe to that one. Uh, for the whole thing, it's $12 a month or $120 Ooh. a year, um, but he does provide a lot of value. I don't know if I need to sign up for it because I get most of the news. What does uh, the Dithering podcast cost by itself? I think it's 5 bucks a month, so mm. for an extra 7 bucks a month, uh, oh, yeah, less if you buy it by a year says it right there yes yes uh so yeah uh stratechery plus we've got one more place it seems like every week we get a new plus service so we'll Exciting. keep we'll keep bringing those to you uh our <laughs> we're always talking about uber and like the ride sharing services well from wired california voted for cheaper uber rides it may have hurt drivers well, you think it's always going to trickle down to the lowest common denominator. It's yes. uh, Uber's not going to eat that cost. <laughs> the yes. drivers are going to get it. Yeah. So this was the Proposition 22 uh, for app-based companies said would improve worker conditions while keeping rides and deliveries cheap and abundant for consumers. Uh, and they, they're they saying from some research study by PolicyLink uh, that they – the holistic cost they make an hourly wage of six dollars and twenty cents when you include gas and vehicle wear and tear hmm. um which is not uh as it says in the article six dollars and twenty cents 
well below California's minimum wage of $15 an hour. <laughs> yes. That's some, that's some math there. That's around half, and I don't even have to do the math. Yes, yeah. So uh, I thought I would bring that up that... Interesting. Uh, yeah, but, that whole thing yeah. is still weird when Uber's still losing tons of money and now driver... I mean, especially with gas prices, which yeah. uh, as of today are on their way back up or as of the last couple of days, but... Yay? Um, yeah. No. Yes. I get an uh, alert from one of those apps. Hey, the your preferred provider, and it shows either the, the gas is cheaper or higher, and I noticed that it was higher. And I'm yes. like, that's going the wrong way. So. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, what's uh, going on in Hollywood? Well. Or, or at least the Hollywood Reporter. Yes. Uh, Amazon scores big with first Thursday night football games. So you'll remember that Amazon... Uh, bid and won to get the rights to a Thursday night NFL game. Mm -hmm. um, and Nielsen says 13 million viewers watched the September 15th uh, contest on Prime Video and local over-the-air affiliates. Uh, I'm, I, I can't remember if I saw any of that or not, but, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs were in there. I should have been yes. watching, so. You should have. And uh, with, I believe, with Amazon Prime, that we it was included. both have. It's included. And I, I saw somewhere that um, Amazon was saying that it was like the biggest one day sign up for Prime that they've had like ever or something that everybody wanted this football. I mean, the NFL is huge in the U.S. as far as viewership, mostly because there's so few games. Yeah. Um, you know, you get one a week and there's only... 16 or 17 games in the regular season. Uh, but yeah, so Amazon is uh, getting into the NFL game. I haven't heard too much discussion on how the broadcast was, how they did with it. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know if that's more controlled by the NFL than Amazon. It's kind of different for each sport. Yeah. So. Well, let's, I'm not a big sports guy, so let's stop talking about sports and let's talk about the NFL Super Bowl halftime. Yes, yes. Well, uh, crazy news. I mean, it seems like forever that Pepsi has been the sponsor of the Super Bowl halftime show. I looked, it's been for the last 10 years. So their contract was up and Apple Music they is the new, new sponsor. Um, and I think they said around $50 million a year for that, for the right to. Uh, and I also saw elsewhere that um, supposedly Rihanna will be the mm. halftime artist this year. But yeah, Apple Music going strong with the Super Bowl halftime show. Early on, rumors were Taylor Swift, and I'm like, yeah. I could get behind that. Rihanna, I don't know. I guess she's yeah. got some good music. We'll she see does have goes. some some good music, but uh, we will see how it goes. It's going to be hard to follow up Dre and Snoop from yeah. last year. True, with Eminem as a guest star as well. Wasn't yes. he there? Yeah. Yes. Well, you know what else is hard to follow up? Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. Well, with all of the new advanced iOS 16 features that we talked about last week, that giant list that we yes. went through, um, I kept one on the DL because, one, I don't think it was on the list, uh, but, two, I needed content for this week because, you know, that's how I roll. Yes. Many of us take screenshots on our iPhones and probably 90% of those are by mistake. But the <laughs> ones that that we do for real, it's this whole song and dance. It's like I've got a screenshot, I want to send it to Nate so it does its thing. I quickly tap it right and then I can get into this editor mode and maybe I crop it, then I hit the little share sheet and I sh I share a copy with Nate or maybe well when I do that that, which is fine, uh, or maybe I just copy it and paste it into email or something. But but anyway, whatever action I do, it always saves the dumb thing to my camera roll. Mm, and I'm like, yeah. I don't want that thing. And you got to go back in your camera roll and delete it. And it's now, especially with the camera roll sharing feature that's going to be rolling out later this year with your yeah. family, you don't want to clog up your feed with a bunch of stupid screenshots of stuff. So there's a new feature in iOS 16 when you – do the screenshot that is brilliant and it's called copy and delete mm -hmm. it's an option in the share sheet you tap the share sheet and one of them says copy and delete and you tap that deletes the photo then you can go to your messages and hit paste you can go to your email and hit paste you can do whatever and hit paste and it will show up 
in that wow, application. That is nice. And it will no longer be copied to your camera roll. That is a good one. Yes, screenshot management is always Ugh. a uh, a chore, but Apple is trying to make it better. Yes. At least there's a, a built-in album in your camera uh, gallery that says screenshots, and you can yes. quickly delete them all. But yeah, who wants to mess with it, with any of that? So they're just making it streamlined and simpler for the average user. Very nice. Uh, well, on to our takes of the week. This first one, big news. Uh, after, what, 44 years, James Oof. Earl Jones is retiring from Darth Vader, uh, but an AI firm owns his voice. Yes, and it was interesting when Rogue One came out, uh, James Earl Jones' voices, voice was reprised in the role of Darth Vader. And there were some parts that were like, this this uh voice is a little tired uh what's what's good this is an 80 year old the uh, james earl jones and then fast forward to years later uh with obi-wan kenobi series you hear that iconic voice again and it actually sounded a lot better it sounded young and i was thinking to myself well maybe he was sick the last time they did it and you yeah. know he got you better i think maybe they could have thought through that a little bit <laughs> something but uh it was just it was it was right on it was exactly what you expected it to be well come to find out uh it was not really his voice he was credited in the credits but this ai firm had done the voicing for that and there's been some controversy because there's other actors who have portrayed his voice like in some animated series and various things and they sound pretty good so maybe just let another actor do it and it sounds close enough kind of like kermit <laughs> remember when jim henson died kermit oh, yeah. sounded really weird for a while because yes. his son took over i think and uh but now when i hear it it's just that's kermit and when i hear the old kermit i'm like oh well that's really different that's weird <laughs> so anyway it's it's all uh entertainment and media so yeah. nobody should get their panties in a bunch either way but uh, i just thought this was an interesting use of technology yes yes so the company is respeecher a ukrainian tech company uh, that uses an ai algorithm we've talked about similar ones but um you know obviously they are uh, well vested unlike the free one that i tried at one point um you know this is when it's the star wars franchise they yeah. can invest a little money in trying to do it uh well and he is 91 now yeah. which Ooh. is amazing um but yeah i think and from what i heard somebody discussing that so it said he they own his voice well yeah. he still he has licensed his voice like he still makes out and his family will you know yeah. get some sort of uh compensation for using his voice which i think that's a cool way yeah um to do it as long as it's used for good not right. the dark side oh wait it's, Darth yeah. Vader. <laughs> right um, yeah it's probably one of those things when they have a project and they utilize his likeness he will get a, a kickback on that yes yeah so very cool um <laughs> We've got another uh, TikTok sub sub genre to talk about uh, uh -oh. from The Verge. Amazon is tightening its ebook return policy to thwart book talk. Now I don't know anything about book talk. Yeah. So please explain. Do people buy books on Amazon? Do something with them and then return them? What are they doing with them? So basically, and I have seen this on TikTok where it's like, ah, here's this, you know, cheat at Costco or this, here's how to get around this. And so it sounds like people were saying, hey, you just get the, get the book on Amazon and then you return it within your thing. And it's so like you read no it real charge. fast or whatever. Yeah. Um, by the buying them to get free books by buying and then returning them. Um, and previously, Am Amazon said it had policies and mechanisms in place to prevent our ebooks return policy from being abused. Well, now they have adjusted that policy and they plan to limit automatic ebook returns to cases where people have read no more than 10% of the book. Yeah. And I think that's the way it ought to be. Yeah. If you purchased it in error and you're like, hey, I need to return this, or like, well, he hasn't even opened the book. Obviously, it was a mistake. And they take that away. But if you've read 99.9%, everything except for the the ads in the back of the page, it's like, well, sorry. Yes. Yeah. So it, the kid it's just one of those flipped things. through it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they, they tried to be lenient with it and then, you know, 
TikTok ruins everything and they've well, got to hammer down. But it makes sense. You can still request a refund, but you have to submit for a manual review. Uh, so that's what's going on with that. Well, I agree with that sentiment that TikTok ruins everything. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and speaking of books... Spotify is getting into the audiobooks business. Oh boy. First it was music. Yay. Then it was podcasts. Boo. Boo. Now it's going to be audiobooks. So now when I open up Spotify for the first time in a year, like I did the other day, <laughs> yes. the first thing I see aren't a bunch of, you should subscribe to this podcast and listen to this. And it's like, I just want to get to the music, please. Yes. Yes. <sighs> No, we, have, we have discussed that uh, before, but they yeah. acquired the audiobook platform Findaway uh, for $119 million, and they're formally launching the audiobooks business with an a la carte model that so you will purchase and download individual audiobooks. So again, anything audio and some of video, they're trying to get all under their umbrella so they can make more money and keep people in, in their app more. Well, if only they could find a way to add a setting that turns off podcasts and audiobooks now, I might go back. Yes, yes. And it says Spotify is not offering audiobook discounts for premium subscribers, at least at launch, uh, which seems kind of weird that maybe you would get some, you know, like Audible, which is owned by Amazon. Um, you know, you get so many books per month or you can get discounts on things if you're an Amazon Prime or an mm -hmm. Audible member, but yeah. uh, not as much with Spotify, at least for now. Well, at least we made it through our take section without talking about Facebook. Yes. Woo! Woo. Uh, we will get there. We will get there, my friend. We are not done yet. Oh, but we're not? First of all, uh, from the Wall Street Journal, um, <laughs> Wegmans, which is a uh, East Coast grocery store change, chain stops using self-checkout app after suffering losses now how can this be people just they scan three of the four items and walk out the door well so this is like the phone app self-checkout where you are on the honor system and unlike oh. apple or amazon they didn't quite have no. a, as good of a <laughs> system as apple or amazon maybe didn't spend as much money so they're having see. a lot of problem with uh people pretending like they were using the app and then uh just Walking. taking off with the stuff so there was probably some tiktok hack hey get yes. free food to walk into the store pretend you're in the app and walk out yes. with a thousand dollars worth on of groceries grocery talk yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so uh, Wegmans is, is not doing that. And then, Dave, just for you, what? under our uh, security and privacy, oh, no. Meta is uh. being sued over tracking iPhone users despite Apple's privacy features. Facebook at it again. I thought we were going to get away with it this time. But yes, these, these guys, I mean, I'm so glad that they're being punished for just playing fast and loose with everybody's data and it's like hey do you want to hey, you want to allow us to track you no oh well we're going to track you anyway yes. i i really wish society could decouple its addiction to facebook and could we just all go somewhere else and do something to tiktok differently well maybe i mean they're not getting sued for stealing uh data yeah and i, I was reading through this one so it looks like this lawsuit is based on the story we talked about a while ago where the in-app browsers some apps people were thinking that they could be you know have a key logger in there or be tracking all the information if you're using a web browser within um, the app right. so it looks so i am interested to see because through this if it does go to court there should be discovery so they will really find out if they were doing this kind of stuff they um, were they were well hey there is a update to the article a meta spokesperson has provided mac rumors with the following statement these allegations are without merit and we will defend ourselves vigorously. We have designed our in-app browser to respect users' privacy choices, including how data may be used for ads. Hmm. So Meta we says they're see. not doing, doing anything. Oh. Well, the close, uh, case closed. I believe them. Yes. They've never lied before. 
So. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, let us cleanse your palate with the bonus odd take of the week. Now, uh, long-time listeners will know I used to be a huge uh, purveyor of local news and <laughs> taking pictures of the horrible weather charts they had and everything. Yeah. Uh, well, this one, this website I found is called forecastadvisor.com, uh, and you can go on there and put in your zip code or your city and it looks, it says right at the top, who has the most accurate forecast for your location? Get a five-day forecast and accuracy analysis for analysis for any U.S. zip code or city. I put in my zip code, and the analysis is the most accurate forecast software was for Isha slash Vaisala. I don't know yeah. what that is. Uh, is it some is... Italian thing? I don't know. That is the same. And I was hoping this was going to be like the local weathermen, yeah, like, like them, their whatever. faces ranked <laughs> of how good they were. Oh, that'd be um, great. So it is more over, overall with, you know, the weather channel, weather underground, open weather, uh, dark sky, AccuWeather, all these different services and looking at how accurate they were. Uh, for last month. Yeah, I do like Weather Underground, and it used to be my go-to place for all things weather. And if I were a weather person at one of the local studios, I would just read the website and then do all my forecasts based on it. I'd be 90% accurate. That's probably yeah. better than a lot of them do when they try to do it themselves. Yes, yes. So, uh, and you can go into further analysis here, but uh, it is interesting to see. It would be um, very curious to see how it compares with, say, Oregon, where our weather can be all over the place. To compared to like Arizona, where it can Hawaii. be, you know, you know, pretty consistent. <laughs> San Diego, where it's yeah. like eighty-five every single day. It's eighty-five no again today. Yeah. Uh, see you later. Yeah. Have a good so commute. That's what I need is this site to do city to city analysis to see how it works in different mm. locations. You're always asking for more and more, Nate. Yes, and I'm going to ask for even more with our picks of the week. Yes, and this week is something that I've talked about before, but I recently purchased some of these for uh, work. And you've seen them, you know them, they're everywhere. You can get any brand. They are a smart plug. This is an mm. item that you connect to some type of network and from your phone or whatever, your your verbal assistant, you can turn the plug on and off. I'm going to be using them for lights to turn lights on and off that are like string lights, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. But one brand I really like, there are kind of two that I go back and forth on, but one that I've kind of settled into is GoSund. Hmm. And it's kind of like when when the dad is, uh, the kid's at the race and the dad's in the stands and he's going, Go son, duh. Duh. Uh, <laughs> Go son, duh. <laughs> Duh, G-O-S-U-N-D. And I did a search just now, and I ordered these a couple of days ago. They're calling themselves G-Home now for some reason. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to look at the packaging. I'm pretty sure the packaging I received was Go Sun, but they, are. they were kind of rebranding to G-Home or something, which huh. maybe have a, uh, a thing with uh, Google that's maybe not yeah. compatible. Like, are they going to get sued out of existence for using G-Home, Google Home? I don't know. Regardless, I got a four pack of these suckers for 27 bucks, which works out to $6.75 each. Uh, at least nice. that's what the website says. I did not do the math myself. But just a reminder, if you've got an item in your home, a fan, string lights, something else that you want to turn on and off remotely or schedule or use your voice assistant to turn on and off, these smart plugs are the way to go. Wise makes them. Amazon makes them. And GoSun makes them, and they yes. make them very inexpensive. Yes, I I have a couple. I think they might be TP Link ones that I mm -hmm. use each year. I get them out for the Christmas tree and the Christmas lights outside to be able to yes. control those. But uh, I don't have a lot of other things that I think that I need to control with smart switches. Um, but they are very helpful. Well, my pick of the week this week. Uh, this is not the pick, but Dave, are you familiar with a game called Farkle? I am. I like Farkle. I you roll the like, dice and you do the things. Yeah. Yes. It's also can be known as 10,000. Yes. Um, I think Farkle's the trademark name maybe, but everybody just uses it. Anyways, basically you have six yeah. dice. 
you roll the dice. You're there's a little bit of risk involved because you can keep rolling, yeah, uh, kind of like or, Yahtzee yeah. on steroids. Um, but recently, when we were in Sun River with the family, we were playing Farkle almost every night, and um, my dad likes to be the scorekeeper. Well, you know, it gets later in the night, and you're having to do a lot of math, and people are kind of eyeing him and making sure he's doing it right and everything. And they go, <laughs> "Hey, you know what?" I bet there's an app for that. Oh. So I went to the iOS app store and I found a great app. It's called Farkle Scorekeeper. Perfect. And you go in there and they do have ads. You can unlock it, but you add in your players. Okay. I see. And then at the bottom, there's kind of like a little calculator thing. You put in the score, you can hit bank, or if somebody farkles, you hit the big orange Farkle button. Um, and you can do it and it keeps track of whose turn it is. You just, and it adds up your score. You can go into the settings cause we were playing to 20,000 instead of 10,000. Oh, wow. Um, so you can go in and do that and change what score you're playing to. Let me uh, guess. But, you kept losing and you're like, well, 10,000, let's go to 15,000. Then you yes. keep losing. Let's go to 20,000. I see how it is. Uh, look at that. The one game oh. when we finally decided to use it, I you did. did. Uh, I won a close match. You barely um, won, yeah. Barely won. But yeah, it's one of those things. It's a simple little app, but, you know, keeping score, it's just like it's ripe with a uh, chance for error mm -hmm. in scorekeeping. So now you've got this app. You can type it in. It keeps track of everything for you. Uh, and you can even look at like some kind of It'll look at the chart so you can see each of the scores and how many times you fark old um, mm. and all that stuff. So it's really cool little app. It's free. And again, you can pay, I think, three ninety nine to get rid of that ads, but the ads did not bother me at all. So. And the funny thing about that word farkle is so close to the English word sparkle. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. Um, and maybe the, you were thinking something else. Yes. Yes. Uh, so I'm just looking in the settings here. And there's some settings that I had never thought of with the game. There is a toggle for allow negative scores, which mm. I'm not sure how you get a negative score in Farkle. There you, is yeah, you bet the you bet the farm and you lose. I don't yeah. Know. Oh, there's descending score mode. That's kind of cool. So it would count down from twenty thousand or ten thousand down. Um, there's three consecutive. Oh, three consecutive Farkles, you lose points. That's a toggle. And if you get a six dice Farkle, which is pretty rare, you score points for a six dice Farkle. I had never hmm. thought of that. That'd be a fun little fun little thing. But yeah, great little Wait, app. Play, you're play the yourself lead. some Farkle. You're burying the lead. What is the price of this magnificent app? Free, free, free. What? Free, free, free. Yes. Free with ads, I assume. Y yes, free with ads. And it's got, now I can't get back to the what it, let's see. Unlock and remove ads for three ninety nine. Oh, but that's cheap at twice the price. Yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, that is uh, Farkle Scorekeeper, and I'll have a link in the show notes. Like we have links for everything with yeah. timestamps and all that good stuff for if you. If you're ever looking for anything we've ever discussed, just go to our website and type yes. in what you're looking for. All the links, all the timestamps, everything is there. Nate does a meticulous job of cataloging all of that. Yes, I, I tried to do my best. Uh, and with that, we will wrap up this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Share it with a friend. Share it with a family member. Share it with somebody else. Walk down the street. Share it with people. Mm -hmm. All that good stuff so that we can help everybody get out there and tech better. Amazon, 